Are you there? Hey, Nigel. Yes, I am. And I'm joined by the very fabulous Lucy Turner. Woo! Loving the hair, babe. Loving the, the full red as well. <laughs> I love it. I love it. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm super excited to be at Move It again. Move It is like the highlight of my year. So, yeah, it feels unreal. I love it. That's a very, very big statement. I mean, with everything going on, it probably is a highlight. Um, and who are your role models? when you started off dancing? Because you've been coming here since you were 15, right? Yeah, I've been coming here for years and years. I feel like in the uh, inclusive dance realm, Kate Stanforth is a real standout to me because uh, she has Ellis Daniel Syndrome like me and she's made a really amazing career for herself. And yeah, to follow in footsteps like that is like super inspiring. It's so iconic and you are literally continuing that path. <laughs> Can you give us your top creative uh, tips in making it in the disabled dance sector today, Lucy? Um, so some of my favorite companies that work in the inclusive sector um, are Kanduko, Scott Gap, Kathy Waller Dance Company. There are some amazing individual artists as well, such as Claire Cunningham, Dan Dor. Yeah, they're super, super interesting in the way that they include like the disabled experience into their practice and their performance. It's quite a lot of dance schools, which is amazing. It shows progression is happening. And um, for anyone who, experiences, you know, difficulties uh, facilitating, facilitating the inclusive dance space, what are some kind of advice you'd give them? Yeah, I think my biggest advice is that like everyone has access needs, like not just people with disabilities. Like if you are ill or like injured or you're menstruating, like everyone's going to have different access levels uh, in a dance class. So to make access needs like something that is a necessity that becomes more comfortable for you to like ask about people's access needs I think is super important. I think creating space at the beginning of classes where people can come tell you about their access needs is super important because I think that's the first thing that goes out the window like some teachers rock up they start and you haven't even had a chance to say hey I have like seizures and stuff like that so I think yeah that's super important too and I think like holding yourself accountable I think it's super difficult to um, make an inclusive dance space and so I think being aware of that like everyone has so many different like needs and holding your hands up when you haven't fulfilled something and just going ah yeah I didn't do that right like being accountable and like letting go of your ego as a teacher I think is the key thing. So wise, so much wisdom for me Lucy. <laughs> I love how you mentioned you know letting the teachers know but for anyone who has disabilities and is a kind of a bit scared to tell a teacher how would you encourage them? To say it. So institutions can help support their students. Um, you can have like a learning agreement to let your teachers know in advance who has access needs. Um, so that's super helpful. But it's like a common experience for a disabled dancer to have like a monologue where they start telling you like, hey, this is my name. These are key things that you need to know. Um, and I think if people are concerned about getting discriminated against or maybe you don't have a diagnosis, you can literally just say, hey, this is what I need from you today. You don't have to disclose a diagnosis and you can just say what you need rather than what you are or what you have. I love that. That's super important and so valuable for anyone listening. And off camera, we spoke a bit about your experiences in dance and with your teachers. And what would you say to the Lucy five, ten years ago who kind of struggled or maybe experienced something very negative with a dance teacher? Yeah, I think um, I would just tell myself to stick to my guts. Um, I think I'd say to my dance teachers that the barriers that they placed on me weren't for me to overcome, but for them to. I was told growing up, like, you should never be a teacher because your physical disability means that you don't know how able-bodied people's anatomy works, which is crazy. And I also got told you shouldn't go to dance school, you won't survive the training. And it's... Yeah, it's crazy because here I am, I'm about to graduate from London Contemporary Dance School, right? teaching at Move It for a third year in a row, and I'm super excited to say that from next week onwards, I'm teaching at Pineapple Dance Studios yes, every girl. Saturday, so it's a real big moment. So I would just say that, you know, uh, I'm living proof that your body and brain shouldn't define your ability. Absolutely, and teachers, look at her now, she's bossing it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Woo! Thank you so Amazing. much. Thank you.